Yo guys, it's JJ here and today I'm going to be walking you through how to make a bar to 16 type beat which is of course heavily inspired by Young Fug's bar to 6, of course for Young Fug but before we get into the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, we are on the way to 2k and to show some love I've got a bunch of free kids down below in the link and for the latest kit that I have just released it is in my Instagram which is linked below as well for free of course to go and help yourself to that but without further ado, let's just jump into the video. First thing to note, I'm doing this around 124 BPM, but typically in these inspired beats that are from like, you know, bar to six, you can find a range between like 120 all the way up to 150 and I am doing this in a scale of G minor. So for the first sound, I got myself an instance of Analog Lab 5 and I'm using a preset called the Bell Joker. Of course, if you don't have this available, just use any bell sound of course. But from what we can see here, the pattern is very simple and straightforward. Repeats every one bar, which is a G, going down into a D, D sharp into a D, back up to this G and then using the A and the A sharp back into an A, copy and paste it for a full four bar and then take it up a whole octave for the second half of this 8 bar just for a bit of variation and then last but not least I clicked Alt R and played with the velocity wheel just to randomize the velocities a bit making it sound more human and another thing to note in these beats if you look right here, here and of course here and here these notes are all one semitone apart within the scale which gives it a lot of tension gives it that dark atmospheric vibe which is what you want from these bar to 16 slash bar to 6 beats so without further ado this is what the main melody sounds like for now As for effects, kept it quite simple, starting off with an nice EQ, cutting off all these lows, dumping some highs and getting rid of this frequency. Then for that nice vintage wobbly sound, I used RC20, which is refusing to work with me today, but I did also use some Valhalla Vintage Rib, as we could see, with this kind of preset that I made. And last but not least, I stereo separated the main melody around 30%, just to widen it in the headphones a bit. Next up, we got some instance of Omnisphere, and I am using one of my favorite presets, which is the Growler Move Bass, very, very common preset very much fire for these kind of beats as well and as we can see i am not following the root note at all in terms of the bass pattern you kind of want to come up with your own pattern over here because in these bars to 16 inspired beats you want to really really go for your own little groove and keeping that dark element which we can see here with these notes which are a semitone apart and then just dropping it into the c but it's about finding a nice little bit of rhythm and giving it a nice little bounce with the bass so copy and paste this three more times to get a full 8 bar and without further ado this is what the bass sounds like and next up we got ourselves an instance of contact 7 and i'm using the band de noir pure on the Noir Pure preset ironically and as we can see from the pattern it is it looks a bit complex to be honest but it's actually quite straightforward and the best way to break it down is if we just focus on this four bar over here and then I just isolate all these notes these are actually just the main chords that are playing but all I do is copy and paste it up a whole octave as we can see and then once I've copied and pasted it all up a whole octave all I do is click Alt S and it brings up this nice little strummerizer, which is what I use to strum the notes. Then click Alt R again to randomize the velocities, you know, giving it a nice little bit of a human touch. And another thing to note is if we look at this pattern, I again, I'm using a lot of these notes in tension as over here and down here. And it's really about keeping that nice little dark aesthetic. And again, this chord progression got copy and pasted for a full eight bar, pretty simple pretty straightforward and it's very much higher in the octaves because it fills in that frequency range doesn't clutter up in the mix but with all that being said this is what the keys sound like now for the effects I of course start off with an EQ cutting off all my unwanted lows, then some Soothe 2, 
just to, you know, get rid of some higher frequencies that I wasn't a fan of and just to duck it down. And of course, some RC20, which in this instance doesn't want to work with me. Then, from what we could hear, I used some fruity delay just to give it a bit more of a bounce, fill in that extra space. And last but not least, a heavy amount of reverb just to really add that ambience and that dark on the tone. And then looking at the stereo separation, it's realistically been stereo separated at like 60%. So it is super wide in your headphones and you can really, really tell if you're of course listening to this video with headphones. And now for the final component of the sample, I have got myself an instance of Expand 2 using the resonating lead preset, which is found in the soft leads bank as we can see over here. And to keep it simple guys, all I do is follow the root note of G, go up to a D into a C, then for a bit of variation in the second half of the four bar, go to a D sharp and bring it down to a D, whilst of course clicking Alt R to randomize my velocities. And for the effects, all I did was just whack a little EQ, add some fruity paramatic with this preset to add a bit of movement, and last but not least, a very heavy amount of reverb to drown the sound and make it very ambient. Then, last but not least, I rendered out the full melody, and as we can see, I took it down six semitones, taking it down from that G minor, all the way down to a C sharp minor. And now, without further ado, this is what the full sample for Barter 16 sounds like. And there we have it. Very ambient, very dark, very young folk esque and of course, suiting that nice Barter 16 aesthetic. But now it's time to move to, but now it's time to move on to the drums. And bear in mind, all these sounds are from my kit. So if you want to grab it, link is in the description. So first things first, Garth has a nice little simple clap pattern, very basic and straightforward. So let's move on to the hi hats, which are quite simple. Looking at it, it's essentially just a nice little two bar looped over for a full eight because repetitive and catchy patterns is what gets you them hits. So looking in over here, it's pretty much just spaced out hi-hat as you can see here, here and here. And then these two rolls are very simple, just using the normal step. But if we go into the half step tool in the magnet section over here, that is how I nailed down the nice little roll at the very end. And then it's really that simple. Just copy and paste it one, two, three more times to get a full eight bar. And without further ado, this is what the hi-hat and the clap sound like. And there we have it. And next up, we're going to have the 808 and the kick pattern. And to break it down for you, looking at this 808 pattern, it's essentially this little two bar. It's essentially this little two bar looped over again for a four. But for some variation, I have this little extra F playing over here. I have this little extra F sharp playing over here. And all of these notes that have been placed actually follow the bass line prior, but of course in the adjusted scale. And then the final thing I did for this 808 pattern is I click Control A to highlight all my notes. Then I grab my mouse, hold down this little scroll button. And as you can see, if you scroll all the way to the top, what that does is it maxes your velocities out. And this is very important for your 808 and your kicks in my opinion because it makes them much punchier, it cuts through the mix much nicer, and it's more appealing to artists. And then, for the kick pattern, it essentially is the same as the 808. However, it's all in the note of C, with the velocities maxed out. So without further ado, this is what the 808 pattern and the kick sounds like. there we have it and for the two little final additional sounds first one being the open hat nice little pattern that repeats every two bar one at the first 808 hit and then the one at the second 808 hit and then we just copy and paste that again three more times for a full eight bar and next up we got some a nice little snare which i place again every four bar one over here one over here and then i have this nice little snare going on here because it gives it a little weird bounce so i can't mess with that a lot and then again copy and paste it over to make it a full eight. And now ladies and gentlemen, this is what the full beat for Barter 16 sounds like.
and there we have it folks but before i wrap up the video let me just walk you through the arrangement and the structure of this beat and to break it down let's start with the intro simple eight bar which is the main melody of that bell alongside that bass line with my producer tag of course because gotta be in there next up we got ourselves this lovely lovely chorus which is two eight bars making it a total of 16 but to break it down it's essentially the essential drums playing at the beginning alongside this open hat with the main melody but for the second half, I introduced that nice little snare pattern alongside those high keys. And then looking at the verse section, this is composed of three eight bars. And to break it down, the first eight bar for, and to break it down, the first eight bar starts off with this nice little main melody alongside the bass with a clap, a hat, and that kick that comes in halfway. But then for the second eight bar, I'd like to introduce the snare pattern, of course, alongside those eight and eights. And then that's where I get that nice little lead coming in for a bit of variation so the beat doesn't get stale too quick. But I actually did end up removing the bass as we can see. And then last but not least, the pre-hook, which is that final eight bar in your verse. I stripped away all the drums apart from the clap and the kick that I introduced again halfway through. But I've got myself that nice bass playing with that main melody and that very, very nice lead. Then I copy and paste the chorus again, copy and paste the verse. And then last but not least, we got ourselves a final chorus, but for a bit of variation, I just include that lead in the very end to make it nice and dramatic. And there we have it, fellas. We have made it to the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. And make sure to grab them free kids, guys. I'm telling you they're fire. So people, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.